If you've had a chance to play the Lost Soul demo game included with any RPG engine, you may have noticed that characters can tell you stories while walking around. In the beginning, there was no magic. Man could not project his will outside his body. And NPCs can have conversations with each other. In this episode, we will be covering everything about dialogues and how to configure them and use them in your game. So, let's get started. For this tutorial, I will be using NERPG Engine 0.15, which is available as a free download from nerpg.org slash downloads in Unity package format. NERPG Core includes all of the same functionality as NERPG Engine and is available for free from the Unity Asset Store, but some of the examples that I am demonstrating today you will only find in the NERPG Engine package. Dialogues are found under a game's resources folder in the Dialogue subfolder and can be created by right-clicking in that folder and choosing Create NERPG Dialog. Let's examine some basic dialogue functionality by looking at the sample dialogues included in the Features Demo game. You can find the Features Demo game by going to Tools, NERPG, Welcome Window and clicking on Features Demo Game. In the Features Demo game in the center of town, you'll find an NPC called Dialog. How can I help you? He has several dialogues available. Let's see how you add dialogues to an NPC. To do that, we will look for the Unit Profile folder, and we should find a Dialog NPC unit there. If we scroll down and look at his Inline Interactable Options, we can see one element called nerpg.dialogprops, and there are five dialog names underneath. By adding a dialog props to an NPC and adding dialog names to the dialog names list, you'll be able to have that NPC interact with you and you can play dialogues manually. Let's take a look at the standard dialog. The most basic type of dialog, the standard dialog, once you click on it, will open a dialog window and once you complete it, it will not be available again. You can click the buttons at the bottom and advance through the dialog until all of the options are complete. In the dialog folder, if we click on the standard dialog, we can see that there are three dialog nodes. Each one contains a description as well as a next option. You can see that the start time and show time are set to zero for all of them, as for a standard dialog that you can just click through and opens in a dialog window, these values aren't needed. Next, let's look at repeatable dialogs. In the dialog folder of the Features Demo game, you can find a dialog called Repeatable Dialog. This is exactly the same as a normal dialog, but the repeatable box is checked at the top. Let's see how that works. You'll notice that the standard dialog is done and gone because we've already completed it, but let's click on the repeatable dialog. We can click through, and once again, we can just keep on repeating this dialog. Next, let's look at a dialog that has a speech bubble included. You can see that there is a speech bubble dialog Let's take a look at how that's configured. To have a dialog appear in a speech bubble, it must be set to automatic. Automatic means that it will automatically progress through the dialog in a speech bubble, not in a pop-up dialog window, and the character will not have any option to interact with the dialog to advance it. How it advances is based on the start time and show time. So we have the first dialog node with a start time of zero and a show time of five seconds. Then we have the second dialog node with a start time of five seconds and a show time of five seconds. This dialog will be 10 seconds long and you'll see two speech bubbles appear while we play it. Let's take a look at that. You can see the first speech bubble appears if we wait five seconds, we can see the second speech bubble appears. 
Next, let's look at a dialogue that includes audio clips. We can see there is a voice dialogue here. Let's see how that's configured. If we look in the dialogue folder and find the voice dialogue, we can see that there is an audio clip associated with the description for each of them. What this means is that when this particular option is shown on the screen, then the audio clips associated with it will be played. Let's see how that works. First, I can click on the voice dialog. How can I help you? And the audio clip was played. Let's click on the next option. Looking to buy something? Another audio clip is played. Let's trade. And another audio clip. Take a look around. And another audio clip. Another thing that you can do with dialogues is set them up in chains similar to the way that you can do quest chains by adding prerequisites to them. You can see here a dialog called Prerequisite Dialog. Let's look at how that's set up. If we go into the dialog folder and look at the Prerequisite Dialog, it's just a regular, normal, repeatable dialog without any audio clips, but you can see at the bottom here there are prerequisite conditions. Let's open those up and we can see one dialog prerequisite and we can see that there is a standard dialog listed here. What this means is that for this dialog to show up and be available, then you will have to have already completed the standard dialog. Dialogues can also be integrated into quests so that you have to finish a dialogue before you are able to actually start a quest. Let's look at a quest that doesn't have a dialogue associated with it. Here's the collection quest. If I click on it, I just get the accept button right away. However, if I click on the dialogue introduction quest, then I see a dialogue pop up. If I click on it again, I still get the same dialogue because I haven't completed that dialogue yet. I can click through the next options and choose to view the quest or accept the quest. I'm just going to click on view the quest. Now notice if I go back to dialogue introduction, then the accept option appears instantly and I don't have to go through the dialogue because this dialogue has already been completed. Let's take a look at how that's set up. First, I'm going to go find the dialogue introduction quest in the quests folder. So if we look at the quest and we see the dialogue introduction quest, there's an option here called has opening dialogue. This will automatically search for a dialogue with the same name as the quest. In this case, the quest name is dialogue introduction. So if we go to the dialogue folder and we see the dialogue introduction dialogue, then this dialogue will be displayed and must be completed before being able to accept the quest. Now let's look at some more advanced examples which we can find in the Lost Soul story demo game. If you have the NERPG engine installed, you can go to Tools, NERPG, Welcome Window, and you'll see an option here for the Lost Soul story demo game. If you've progressed far enough through the Lost Soul story demo game, you can see some rather interesting dialogue options. In the Sun Temple, there is an NPC called Apprentice Historian Flair who will walk around and tell you a story when you click on him. Let's take a look at that. In the beginning, there was no magic. Man could not project his will outside his body. In a time before history, people discovered that they could channel their will to control the environment around them. This channeling came to be known as magic. The users of magic were called magi. But there was a side effect. You can read about it in this book right here. Let's see how we would set something like that up. If we find the Apprentice Historian Flare unit in our project and scroll down, we can see that he has a few interactable options. One of them is this NERPG.behavior props. If we fold this out, we can see that he has four behavior names available. A behavior is essentially a series of commands that can run on a character at specific time intervals. So let's look for the Sunsworn History 1 behavior.
If we look at the Sun Sworn History 1 behavior, we can open it up and we can find that there are a few behavior nodes. At a start time of 0, once we start this behavior, you can see that he's going to begin the dialogue called Sun Sworn History 1. At the same time, he's going to begin a patrol called Sun Sworn History 1. If we look at the patrol, we can see that he is going to attempt to find the patrol 1 underscore 1 destination and the patrol 1 underscore 2 destination. Any object in the game that has this tag is where he is going to attempt to walk through. At the same time, he's going to begin the Sunsworn History 1 dialogue. We can see that this is set to automatic, just like some of the previous ones that we've looked at, which is why it displays in a chat bubble above his head. You can see that there is a description here, but there's no audio clip. This is because there is another way to play the voice clips in a dialogue, and that's through setting an audio profile for the entire dialogue. If you set an audio profile, you don't have to set the audio clips individually, so let's look at the Sunsworn History 1 audio profile. You can see that there are four audio clips here in this audio profile, so each of these audio clips will be played when the corresponding dialogue node is displayed. So we have four audio clips, and there are four dialogue nodes, so they will just be automatically matched. Finally, let's take a look at how we would have NPCs having a conversation. You can see right here this trainer is telling these guys to stop arguing, and eventually they're going to start the argument over again, and they're just going to play this argument in a loop for the entire scene. Let's see how that's configured. If we search for the fighter trainee units and the fighter trainer unit, we can see that once again they also have inline interactable options with a behavior props and each of them have one behavior. We can see the fighter trainee has a behavior called fighter trainee 1, the second fighter trainee has a behavior called fighter trainee 2, and the third fighter trainer here has the behavior called fighter trainer. Let's take a look at those. If we look at the fighter trainee 1 behavior, we can see that in this case it has an option at the bottom called automatic and repeatable and looping. The automatic option means that it will automatically start as soon as the character is loaded and spawned. The repeatable option means that this behavior can be repeated more than once, and the looping option means that this behavior will loop, so once it completes, it will automatically start over again. If we look at the behavior nodes, we can see that at a start time of one second, the fighter will begin this dialogue for the fighter trainee one dialogue. Let's look at the Fighter Trainee 2 behavior. He's got the same options, but he doesn't begin his dialogue until 15 seconds. So the first Fighter Trainer will say his piece and attack the dummies, and then the second Fighter Trainee will begin his dialogue and claim that he's better. Finally, if we look at the Fighter Trainer dialogue, or sorry, the Fighter Trainer behavior, we can see that at 30 seconds he'll begin his dialogue, the fighter trainer dialogue, and basically tell them to stop arguing. If we look at the dialogues, we can see that they just have the automatic box checked, as well as being repeatable, so that they can play over and over again. The same thing for the fighter trainee 2 dialogue, and the same thing for the fighter trainee 1 dialogue. And of course, when we go into the game, we can see that they're just basically playing this behavior and having this conversation on a loop. That's it for dialogues. I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you found that useful. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the NERPG YouTube channel and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you in the next video.